Hi, and welcome to a follow-up to the last video where I was messing about with some Soccer A stuff and I was thinking about doing a bit of overclocking but the motherboard that I had wasn't up to it so I've been fiddling around a little bit and upgraded a lot of stuff so I did away with the blue case as much as it held nostalgia for me. It wasn't a very good case, it was bent and... Uh, generally not very stable so we've got a much more solid sort of beige box here and came across a motherboard that had the overclocking functionality that i was after so this is an asus a7n8x which seems to be a pretty good board and i've banged in a, a radeon 9800 pro because i wanted a faster graphics card that wouldn't bottleneck in any way well of course the the cpu would be the cause of the bottleneck so basically it wouldn't stop the cpu performing at its fullest potential and that was pretty much it the board needed some caps replacing so you can see here there were a couple about to shed their guts so i replaced it some caps here and a couple more here i didn't have as many as i wanted so i think there's still two or three that need replacing on there that are in okay condition maybe a slight bulge on the top of one of them but we'll get around to that at some point soon the plan of action is we've got two processors we've got an duron 1300 and we've got an athlon 1300 so we'll look at the specs of them in a minute but the idea is to bench them as they are and then to try and do an overclock on each one of them the first point would be to see can you get the duron to perform as good if not better than the equivalent Athlon which would have cost considerably more money I believe we'll check the prices of those shortly in a second as well and then to push the Athlon as far as it can go and I have a 1400 Thunderbird somewhere as well not quite sure if it works but we'll give it a go and just see if the 1300 Thunderbird surpasses the 1400 Thunderbird so that's the plan <laughs> yeah the BIOS on this machine does speak to you. It's the first time I've ever heard that and pro probably because I never have my speakers turned on when I boot up through post. Well that's a lie, I probably usually do. Anyway, yeah, it speaks to you. Listen. System completed power on self-check. Computer now booting from operating system. First processor is the Athlon Thunderbird 1300. This was the fourth iteration of the Thunderbird, the final iteration. There was one faster speed at 1400 and then we moved on to the Athlon XP. This one has a bus speed of 200, though it's not really 200. It's called 200 because it uses a double data communication between the processor and the memory. It really is 100 because the multiplier is 13 and therefore you get 1.3 gigahertz. Introduced in March 2001, 318 fat green dollars. It's got 64 kilobytes of level 1 cache and 256 kilobytes of level 2 cache. And in the other corner, in this fight to the death, is the Duron 1300 based on the Morgan core. So the specs up front are pretty similar. We've got a double data rated 200 megahertz bus speed, which is really 100 megahertz times 13 to give us a 1.3 gig frequency and it was introduced a little bit later in January 2002 but for a much cheaper price of $118. There's a bit of a die shrink in there and we've got the same 64 kilobytes of level 1 cache and less 64 kilobytes of level 2 cache. So I guess that the Duron was probably up against the Celeron at this time. The Celeron on paper looked better in some ways and worse than the other. The Celeron only had 32 kilobytes of level 1, but 128 kilobytes of level 2, though I think the Celeron held in its level 2 cache a complete copy of everything that was in the level 1 cache, but that doesn't happen on the Duron, so while theoretically you still get slightly more cache on the Celeron, I think the Duron would probably come out faster. It might be worth running that as a little competition at some point. And for those who didn't see the last video, what we've done here is performed the pencil trick, the world famous pencil trick on both of these chips where we've coloured in the gap with pencil to rebuild the connectivity between these level one bridges that you get on the front of the chip and that unlocks the multiplier so we can use it in overclocking. So to record the changes here, it's basically going to be two things. It's going to be using 3D Mark 2001 and I'm going to run it now with the unclocked chip at its 
standard speed, see what we get as a baseline, and then I'm also going to use the benchmark for Dungeon Siege, which is a kind of contemporary game for for these processors, which is a game I played. I didn't even realise there was a benchmark, but apparently Microsoft allowed Ziff Davis to include it in their benchmarking suite. So if you own the program and have the discs, you can install it and then you can download this small patch that allows you to run the first level as a benchmark, which is quite cool. So we'll be taking a look at that shortly as well. The line is drawn in the sand. So the first results are in for the 1300 running it. It's standard speed and it gets 9200 3d marks so there's a whole bunch of other stuff in here and i'm not quite sure how this is going to be split between the gpu and the cpu so it'll be interesting to see if these if the gpu is carrying a lot of weight for this benchmark then perhaps we won't see such a difference as we overclock it but if the cpu is carrying a lot of this weight i imagine it's doing most of the mathematical stuff so i imagine it's carrying a proportion of the weight we should see an improvement in the overall 3d mark score and before we overclock it we'll run it through the dungeon siege benchmark so this is quite cool i think it's just the first level of the game and basically the guy charges through the level and the benchmark throws every monster and effect that, that it can at the character ending in quite a climax it's a fun thing to watch so uh, when i finish the video i'll stick it on the end in its entirety it's only about three minutes long or so so anybody who's interested can watch the whole thing through and this is what you get out of the other end of the dungeon siege benchmark it's a big big list of timings don't really care about that it's just the summary at the top that gives us our average frame rate so that's 41.35 frames per second and it gives a minimum of six so it says maximum i'm sure that's a minimum and a maximum of 227.16 so be interesting to see if an overclock does improve this and that's what we're going to do right now going to go into the overclocking settings and see if we can burn the balls off some chips so we've got a lot more to play with in the BIOS here than we had with the socket A board from the previous videos and first thing we can do is for the multiplier is we can set that to be from a menu which will allow us to choose from a list of frequency multipliers. Then if we go into the bus speed it's still giving us a fairly limited set of choices there but if we get down to system performance it says aggressive, we can choose aggressive for higher performance but with higher risks of instability and that still gives us the same range so it must be user defined and that allows full customization of performance options recommended for experts only so oh, I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't be doing this but we'll give it a go and there's Voltage settings there as well, but won't go there right now. We'll see how far we can get it with just messing about with the multiplier and the front side bus. So here we can see now we've got a much more incremental amount of movement on the front side bus. And we've got a good range of multipliers to use as well. So I'll just start with the barest of tweaks up to 13.5 on the frequency multiplier just to see if the pencil trick is indeed working and to see if that changes the processor speed at all and it looks like the pencil tricks worked because it's giving us a speed of 1350 so that's a 50 megahertz jump so we'll just go in and just give it a very quick whiz to make sure that it is still working properly and then we'll come back and start pushing it up some more and everything was fine with that so we'll come back in and this time we'll push it up a little bit more so maybe give it another 50 so we'll try and just take it straight up to 1400 and change the multiplier to 14 and i did notice in the monitor here so we've got the temperatures i should have really probably tried to look for something to monitor the temperature in real time the maximum temperature for these processes is 90 degrees i think um there's some kind of fan control in here i don't know if that's automatic fan control where it throttles up when it's gets hotter or whatever i'll turn that on see what happens yep that's reading 1400 as well on post so i think this time we'll actually go in and just give it a quick run through 3d mark 2001 
to see if it keels over after it's been running for a bit. And once I get this thing where I think it's stable, I'm gonna you can put uh, 3D Mark on a loop and do a bit of a kind of burn in. So I'll do that later to make sure that it's stable. But we'll see if it's gonna hang in there for one round of 3D Mark on 1400, and hopefully it'll live to tell the tale. And it worked fine all the way through that, and look at the results. So. We had 9,200 at stock speed of 1,300, and now with a 100 megahertz overclock, look at that, 9,398. So it's almost an extra 200 3D marks. And yeah, so it does actually bode well for there being some kind of tangible sort of benefit of doing this. We're back, and I'm feeling excited, and I'm feeling brave, so I'm also feeling very impatient. But we'll uh, leave the multiplier as it is and up it all the way to 1500. It'll actually be 1.48 gigs because I'm using 107 as the front side bus times 14. So fingers crossed, let's see what happens this time. Here we go through the post and yeah, it's rounded up to 1500. So let's get in there and give it a once over with 3D Mark and see what happens. Oh no, I spoke too soon. That's what you get for being too impatient. So yeah, this thing just locked shortly after that. So didn't even get through the post and I ended up having to open, well, the box was already open, tip it on its side and I had to reset the CMOS back to its defaults again. So we're back to square one and I have to push it back up to 1400 easily enough and then see where we can take it from there. And I'll be a bit more gentle this time and just ease it past 1400. So this time it's going to be 102 on the front side bus. Leave it at 14 and that should give us 1428 megahertz. And then we'll quickly run it through 3D Mark and see if it hangs in with that. And this time it just cruised through the post, registered it as 1428 megahertz and booted into Windows fine and... I gave it a run through 3D Mark 2001 again. I'm not going to bench it anymore to its final conclusion. Well, I did, but I'm not going to show the results because they'll just confuse things. The next time I'll show results will be on the final overclock when we reach the best speed that we can with this standard cooler. So back into the BIOS and this time we're going to push it up to 104 on the front side bus and leaving the multiplier at 14 so that should give us 1456 megahertz and we'll see how it gets on with this. No! Oh, blue screen of death! So that doesn't bode well so kind of feels like we're getting close to the limit of what this chip can do at least on its current voltage so reboot so yeah reboot still got issues going to the bios i mean look at this it's completely screwed up <laughs> so gonna have to go back in and reset it with the jumper on the motherboard and then we'll start again so a slight change of tack i think is i was tempted to up the voltage to one point 775 but I'm going to leave it at 1.75 and I'm going to just tweak the frequency a little bit to drop the front side bus to 103 still leave the multiplier at 14. So now we've got a slightly lower CPU speed of 1442 megahertz. System completed power on self -check. Computer now booting from operating system. That voice is beginning to piss me off. There must be a way of turning it off on the BIOS. And this time, a slight improvement. There's no blue screens of death kicking around, but when you try and run 3D Mark 2001, it just will not run. You get splash screen and it closes. So I think now is probably the time to start tweaking the voltage a little bit. That's exactly what I did. Did what I probably should have just left before. So we've upped it. We've only got five choices here running up from 1.75 to 1.85 so the next step up is 1.775 and we'll give that a go and see what happens now certainly trying you can feel like it's becoming a bit more stable blue screen of death's gone now 3d mark runs but when it comes to this test whatever this test may be it freezes so i tried it a couple of times and it froze at around this stage so 
next increment up is 1.8 volts so we'll set the bios to that and we'll run it again and see if we get any further further it got indeed uh, almost all the way through actually and i thought it was going to get through but right at the end this happened it just kind of bombed out and you saw a bit of corruption on the screen there and so it's definitely getting more stable but it still needs a tweak so back in and we'll push the voltage up another notch and see what happens hopefully we're not making too much heat here given the stock cooler but we'll test it for a sort of longer run for stability in a second and this time i just thought you know it's it's not much of an increment so i'm going to take it to the maximum that it allowed me to set it to which is 1.85 which should hopefully make this just stable enough because we're so close to the end of the run so we'll see what happens this time okay there we go this time it did it sailed through the 3d mark 2001 entirely and effortlessly so that means that we've got our final score so the original 1300 stock speed was 9200 3d marks and this time we've got 9,600 3D marks. I apologise for the slightly fuzzy photo. I must have forgotten to adjust my camera. But this gives us an increase of 400 3D marks. So by my calculations, that's a performance increase of 4.166%. Say, let's call it 4.2, which isn't as much as I was expecting to get, to be honest. And these things had quite a reputation for overclocking those, you know, this is a stock AMD cooler, so maybe a better cooling solution might have given us a bit more push on the front side bus and the multiplier and maybe allowed us to roll back a little bit off the voltage but still an increase and we don't know that this is this is a general benchmark and not a gaming specific benchmark so you might get a better idea when we do the comparison with the dungeon siege benchmark which is what i'm going to do now results are in for the dungeon siege benchmark so we can see we've got an average frame rate of 42.87 we've got a minimum of 8.95 a maximum of 222.91 so that compares to the unclocked duron at the average frame rate is 38.62 so 38.62 up to 42.87 isn't bad at all and that works out at a kind of an 11 percent increase in frame rate so it does seem like maybe this is where the reputation came from it makes a significant sort of change to your gaming so you know getting an extra 10 percent plus frame rates is going to be quite a big deal really so that's not a bad sort of overclock at all much more sort of impressive than the four percent of the 3d mock and after all of that excitement i think i'm going to have to draw a close to this video because it's getting to be around 20 minutes long and it's quite long enough for anybody to have to listen to me waffle on and get childishly excited about these things in one sitting. Uh, I have actually filmed all of the other stuff but I, I had planned to do it all in a single video but I think it would end up at about 45 minutes long if I went on and did the Athlon overclock and then the comparison so what I'll do is another video fairly quickly because it's already filmed and everything ready to go to follow up with the Athlon overclock and the comparison at the end. So the Athlon overclock was a little bit sort of more straightforward than this one, but you'll have to wait and see. Anyway, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed watching this crazy overclock on the Duron, uh, another one to follow shortly on the Athlon, and then I've got some other crazy old school benchmarking stuff coming up as well. I hope you'll join me for those things, and in the meantime, it'd be great if you consider giving me a thumbs up, subscribing, liking, leaving comments below, and all the other stuff. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again very shortly with the Athlon overclock.